let's go to the Big 12, speaking of, and uh, a race for one spot, I think is what this conference has turned into. We've got number 14 BYU on the road at number 21 Arizona State. The Forks are favored by three here at home. And guys, I'm going to say Forks up. Let's let's ride with Arizona State. My reasoning for this is, is twofold. Number one, I'm going to run roll with the better running offense at home. The defense has shown that they can be plucky. They are undefeated at home. And Kenny Dillingham really has the boys juiced up. Uh, I love the way Arizona State is playing. Now that they're healthy, Levitt's back. The offense has, has certainly looked a lot more stable than that one game jaunt with Jeff Sims at quarterback. But number two, I'm really concerned about BYU. I am really concerned the air might have come out of the balloon last week. I, I mentioned this in a in a Twitter comment when someone, I've forgotten who, was saying that you know BYU is taking all of this disrespect from, from college game day and nobody believes in the Cougars. And my takeaway was not that BYU is being disrespected, but that folks said, the 2022 TCU model is not going to work again. Mathematically, we just can't have the ball bounce that way so many times in a row. And eventually it did catch up, catch up with BYU. Now, even though everything is still in front of the Cougars, they still control their destiny to a Big 12 championship and to a college football playoff spot. Does it not feel like that bubble of invincibility has been popped? Because I I'm I'm wondering if now they go on the road where Arizona State has not lost at home this season, that feels like a much different test than if BYU had found a way to beat Kansas a week ago. My only pushback on that is, do we really trust Arizona State to be the team that can fully vanquish BYU season? I think they were in a weird spot against Kansas last week, and Honestly, like the Big 12 is just such a blender that you throw all these teams in and you just press play and you figure out who comes out on top each week. And I, if you go back to our preseason prognostications, which mean next to nothing at this point, we all agreed that Kansas was a super talented team. We did. Some of us, some of us thought that Kansas might win 10 or 11 games, but who knows? Um, I, I, are we really ready to say that Arizona State is that much? better than Kansas that they can fully bury BYU. I don't know because neither BYU or Arizona State has exactly played a murderer's row schedule in the Big 12 for whatever that it's worth. Whatever a Big 12 in 2024 murderer's row schedule is, neither one of them have played it. They both avoided Colorado. They both avoided um, some of the other top teams, Iowa State to this point. And I think that I still believe a little bit more in BYU, as weird as that sounds. I think that Arizona State is coming in hot at the right time. I certainly think that both of these teams can get God on the ground. So whoever establishes that run game, and Cam Scadabo is certainly a fair person to bet on in that matchup. But we are talking about uh, just a botched pooch punt away from BYU probably escaping that Kansas game, right? I don't think Kansas was going to drive the field on Saturday and set up a game-winning touchdown. They needed that miracle pooch punt and just a really comical series of events to knock off BYU. Obviously, they got the win. Obviously, BYU has been close to losing other games this year, and it kind of evened out. But on the one game on the field on Saturday, I still feel like I'm a little bit more confident in BYU to at least cover the three point spread. So I'm going to take them in the points. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Arizona State wins this game, obviously, but I'm going to take BYU in the points. Yeah, I'm with you, Trey. I think BYU wins this game. I think BYU covers this three. I I, I just think that they're too good of a team, but they made their mistakes last week, right? Like the, the mistakes happened. They beat themselves. There were things that were very much within their control, uh, and they end up winning that football game, right? It, it Kansas played a heck of a game but it's not like Kansas came in there and just whooped them, right? It's not like that's what happened. There were very much just, you know, a couple of things that if BYU makes a couple different decisions, a couple different play calls towards the end of the game, uh, they end up winning this football game and, and, you know, they're continuing their magic run. I think that they're the better team. I think that they'll bounce back. And honestly, Mitch, to your point, the, the bubble of invincibility being gone, I think puts the extra stakes up there. I think it puts extra pressure on them. And I think it's going to kind of force them to do – um, do a little bit more to kind of overcome that and say, hey, we need to really lock in, really focus, uh, because if we don't, then, yeah, the season could come crashing down. Uh, and, and 
I, I clearly don't think that that's going to be the case with BYU. I think they're a very talented team. I think they're very good, and I think that they can handle that no problem. Well, both teams do control their destiny here to get to Arlington. Uh, obviously, the Big 12, somebody's got to win the conference, right? Whether it's BYU, Arizona State, Colorado at this point. Um, Trey, Kansas State's out. Iowa State needs help. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Yeah, Iowa State needs a lot of help. Okay. Yeah, so for all intents and purposes, we're down to down to three teams. I, I think, funnily enough, everyone has come around the, to the idea that Colorado – is probably the best overall team remaining. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Colorado and in, in the Buffs. Um, I, I think later on in the run sheet. Yeah, they, yeah, they, I've got I've got the Big Twelve scenarios down there in the run sheet. The short of it is Colorado, BYU, and Arizona State all control their own destiny. Yeah, Iowa State needs some help. Perfect. Okay. Well, when we get to the B, uh, the Big Twelve, I'm going to pitch it to Trey. He's got he's got a whole a whole list of chaos that we're rooting for this week. Gracious, how about that? 